Good morning, we are making taco soup this morning. Um, it's like a taco soup pasta thing, okay? So um, I have pre-cooked my ground beef and I've pre-chopped my onions. We're gonna throw into the crock pot the beef, the onions, water, some beef broth, a can of diced tomatoes, a large 19 ounce can of red enchilada sauce, a clove of garlic, an envelope of taco seasoning, whatever brand you like, and one of these little packages of green chili enchilada sauce. This one can be a little bit hard to find, but my Kroger carries it, thank goodness. Um, and then after it has cooked for five hours, which really I'm gonna have it cook all day, I'll set the timer for five hours, but I won't come back to it till it's time for dinner. Um, it'll sit on warm for the rest of the day. But after, you know, once we're ready to sit down and eat and finish up the meal, we will cook a box of salad shells. And then I will also toss in two cups of cheddar cheese into my crock pot and four ounces of fat-free cream cheese. You can do full fat, but we're watching our saturated fats. So we're going fat-free. Um, and all of that will cook while I am cooking the shells. Um, and that way the cheese will melt and kind of incorporate. This is a cheesy, creamy, pasta-y, soup, chili thing, but it's delicious. Uh, if I didn't put the, sh the pasta shells in it, I would probably like eat it with Frito scoops like as a dip. Uh, Cause that's, it, it is very much of a dip type thing. I'm using plain diced tomatoes, but if you want an added kick, you could go with Rotel tomatoes or any tomatoes that have that taco seasoning in it or that extra chili in it. Well, we're gonna go ahead and get started. This is one pound, and it's hot, so I'm gonna get my pot holder. It is one pound of 85% lean ground beef. Um, we go as lean as we can find at the grocery store. But we understand that ground beef is not cheap if you're looking for lean ground beef. Yeah, so the not cheap. The more fat, the cheaper it is. And that's that's a whole soapbox thing, which I'm not going to do to you today. Because I can get up on my soapbox and talk about how expensive it is to eat healthy. But I'm not gonna do that to you. One cup of water. One onion chopped. You could use less onion. I think the original recipe only calls for like a fourth of a cup, but I don't like storing onion in my fridge. It makes the whole fridge smell funny, even with a good sealed dish. So I just use the whole onion. One cup of beef broth. Now you could do two cups of water if you don't want to use beef broth. Um, I am using the lower sodium beef broth but it's still pretty salty. And if you want to eliminate that, you can just do two cups of water instead of one cup of each. I wouldn't recommend doing two cups of beef broth. That would be pretty, pretty salty in the end if you did that. You could, but I don't recommend it. Okay, we're gonna do the whole package of this green chili sauce. This is not really a green, I mean, it is an enchilada sauce, but it's not just a, your traditional green enchilada sauce. It's um, it's a little thicker, thicker, a little chunkier. I tried to say thick and chunky at the same time, it didn't come out right. <laughs> but that sauce is coming out right. Yeah. Okay, and then we're gonna do the whole envelope of taco seasoning. And you could use your own homemade blend of taco seasoning. One package is about 12 teaspoons, which is about four tablespoons. So you need about four tablespoons of your own blend of taco seasoning. Which is near a quarter of a cup, isn't it? Yeah, that's about a quarter of a cup. Okay, we're gonna do one clove of garlic. This is a bulb. We want one of the little pieces in there. You could use garlic powder for this. 
Um, if you're going to use garlic powder, it's about one teaspoon of garlic powder. If you're going to use dried minced garlic, it's about, a, mm, I think it's about a tablespoon. Maybe it's half of a tablespoon. We're going to use one fresh clove of garlic pressed with my garlic press. is lying outside the kitchen door and she's crying to come in. Okay, I'm gonna open up my cans and dump those in too. And then I will stir everything up. I'll just come over in here and mop you. Okay, ignore the pancake drippings from this morning's breakfast. I haven't had time to clean it up yet. We had churro pancakes for breakfast. Yeah. Which I've not had the time to do a video of, unfortunately. But it's a Tuesday, and so in our house, Tuesday is Taco Tuesday as best we can. And so the pancakes were churro pancakes. So tell us how excited you are about uh, Crystal doing a video for that. So this is one whole 19 ounce can of enchilada sauce, red enchilada sauce. We use mild, um, really for our kids' sake more than anything else. Otherwise, I would use spicy. We really like spicy food in our house. Which is funny moving to Kentucky because everything's a little bit lander here. No offense, guys. Yeah. It just is. Okay, and then my can of no salt added diced tomatoes. Like I said, for extra spice, you could do like Rotel. Um, you just need that 14 and a half ounces. Um, or I think Kroger makes a diced tomatoes with chilies in it also. I think they come in smaller cans. I'm giving this a good stir to get everything all good and mixed up. Then I'm gonna cook it on low for five hours. We'll come back. Add four ounces of cream cheese, two cups of cheddar cheese, and cook some pasta shells to go with it. Now, the soup minus the pasta makes about 10 cups, if I can do math. And that means each cup is about 11 grams of carbs. And then the shells per cup and a half is 42 grams of carbs. So 42 plus 11 is 53. I might only have three fourths of a cup of shells. Now that 53 does still fit into my carb limit, but if I want dessert or maybe a glass of milk, um, then I can't eat that much. I have to have less. So um, when it comes to watching your carbs or your calories, it's not just about eating certain kinds of foods, and it definitely is, but you can still eat the foods you like in moderation. Portion control is super important. I probably need to do a video on how to read nutrition labels because I, I don't go to the store without reading nutrition labels. Anyway, I'm gonna set my crock pot. That's a whole other post for a whole other day. Okay, crock pot is set on low for five hours. We will see you back here later today to add the cheese and cook the shells. Okay, so it has been several hours. My crock pot has been on warm for a long time because we cooked it for five hours. And you can't smell it because smell of vision doesn't exist yet but it smells wonderful. Because I want the cheese to melt, I'm gonna take it off warm and put it on high. And I'm going to add in my cheese. We need four ounces. I'm using fat-free cream cheese. You can use less fat or um, full fat cheese, whatever float your boat. I will say as a cheese guy, um, there's a very identifiable difference. Just if you just have straight fat-free cream cheese to regular cream cheese, like original, you can tell the difference. Um, but as far as in cooking, yeah, you really can't tell the difference. 
Yeah, when it's included in recipes, you can't really tell the difference. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut chunks off into the pot. This can kind of be a little bit of a pain to get it to melt and fully incorporate. And I have a couple of non-cheese eaters who can tell when there's a, a section of cream cheese that did not incorporate and they're not happy about it. Yeah, so those smaller chunks do actually help. Yeah. Um, I do have a pot of water on the stove trying to come to a boil so that I can cook my shells. It's, um, yeah, I don't know what I was gonna say. It just fell right out of my head before you even made it to my mouth. I'm gonna use a whole box of shells. And I'm gonna add two cups of shredded cheese, shredded cheddar cheese that I do want to melt and incorporate in also, but I want this cream cheese to melt first. I hear my water beginning to boil. So I'm gonna go over there. And dump the shells in. So if you're having trouble bringing your pot up to boiling, make sure you've added some salt to it. Salt water has a lower boiling temperature than plain water, and so it'll boil faster. Um, noodles, especially macaroni type noodles, shells like this, um, they tend to stick to the bottom of your pot if you just dump them and leave them. So I usually use my spaghetti rake to give them a stir. But I want my water to come back to a boil, so I like the wooden handle of this because for some reason, uh, it's an old wives tale that that wooden spoon the wooden handle laid over across the top of your bowl brings it to a boiling I don't know why that works but it always works every time I try I don't know why that is I, I thought it worked because we had the you know the stove top on yeah but it boils faster with the wooden spoon I don't know why right. I know <laughs> I know. It's cool. My husband thinks I'm crazy, but I've watched it happen. Yeah. Some old wives' tales are real. Sometimes, because old wives, you know, have life figured out. Yeah. Thank you. So. Okay. Check and see how my cheese is doing. It's still pretty solid. Now, you could use a whisk. And I might go ahead and do that too, to kind of break it up a little bit more. Um, I don't like catching the rest of the food in my whisk though. But because this has been on warm instead of low or high for a while, it's not, it's not like scorching hot. It's not cheese melting hot. And cream cheese takes a while to melt anyways. But if you put cream cheese in to cook with the soup during the day, it tends to get crusty and weird and it still doesn't incorporate well. So tis better to wait. It's one of those things that through trial and error you discover. Yeah, milk, dairy products in the crock pot tend to get crusty. Um, so there's a recipe I used to make years ago in the crock pot that was like fresh green beans and a couple boxes of stove top and some chicken breasts and some sour cream and some chicken soup and that sour cream was supposed to mix in with the stove top to make good fluffy stuffing and it never did and it always got really crusty and weird and I was reading a food blog and uh, apparently that's a thing. See it worked. It came up to a boil super fast. You call me crazy. <laughs> okay, these are going to cook for quite a while, 
13 to 15 minutes. It's already been a couple minutes, so probably 10 more. I'm going to turn this down some so it doesn't boil over. Yeah, you want to uh, underestimate how long it will take because if you overestimate, you'll overcook. Yeah, so this is another noodle that um, I usually just taste it to tell if it's done, but you can see like these are still pretty dry because uh, I just put them in, right? So they're still yellow. Once they're cooked, they will be more of a white, uh, almost a translucent, and they'll be soft and squishier, but it's best to tell just by popping one in your mouth and chewing it. Be careful about the boiling water, as yes. always. Yes, and, and shells tend to hide water, like, like the one that just fell through the spoon had water in it, and that boiling water will burn your tongue. So I always try to make sure I get one like that that like doesn't have water in it because it's on top of the thing. Yep. But that's part of the reason why Shells has been chosen for this soup recipe because the uh, taco soup stuff will be inside the shells. Yeah. And so um, it eats really well. Uh, it's, it's all together. Yes, it's, it's really delicious. Oh. Oh. My refrigerator has an alarm on it. Thank goodness you. I think actually my cheese is pretty good. Nope, Ooh, there's a big there's one. A... Is it whisk worthy? Um, okay. Yeah, I will go ahead and get the whisk just to. Okay. So this uh, cream cheese has to be incorporated before you yeah, add the cheddar, right? Is that what you're Right. Doing? Okay, I lied. I'm not going to get the whisk because it's dirty. But the next best thing is a big fork. This is just like a like a salad serving fork. So I'm gonna kind of whisk it, but not too vigorously because I don't want to splash the soup everywhere. Maybe if you can find those lumps, just to push them up against the side, makes a big difference. Yeah, but it also kind of gets it crusty too on the side. See like right there. Oh uh, yeah. Thank you. You're the one with the real wise advice. I try. As, as I also try to not burn myself with soup as I whisk it out of the pot. <laughs> that seems to be much better. And the color of the soup even changed. It even got a little whiter as the cheese got incorporated better. See that? It's yeah. more of an opaque. And so adding the cheese is not going to make it like this creamy thing. It's, it's going to be a little creamy, but it's still going to be liquid soup. I remember one of the first times I made this, I just kept adding the cheese because it didn't get cheesy. And then I had cheese everywhere and I couldn't figure out what my problem was. It's soup. That's, it's going to be soupy, not creamy. So two cups of cheddar. I'm using mild. You can use sharp. Uh, mild was just bag that I happened to pick up at the store. I am not a cheese connoisseur and mild and sharp taste basically the same to me. And I'm sure those of you who are cheese connoisseurs are gasping now. <laughs> That's a little more than two cups. But that's okay. Hey, I won't complain, said the cheese connoisseur. <laughs> Your arteries might though. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now remember, I have my pot on high to help this melt and cook. It's already getting soft. Yeah. But see, it's still, it's still pretty liquidy. So it's not going to get like suddenly solid and, and saucy. It's not sauce, it's soup. Right. But that cheddar cheese will stick to your fork. It'll stick to the bottom of your bowl. Um, and that's oh, a yeah. real smooth, uh, non-stick spoon. So, uh... The cheese is mostly sliding off of it, but it is kind of sticking. So are you saying that it's like difficult to clean up when you're done? Um, I'm, I'm saying whenever I'm finishing up the bottom of my bowl, I'm scraping the cheese off of the bowl saying, come here, I want you my cheese. And, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I feel like I'm scraping the fork off with my teeth, trying to get the mm. cheese off the fork. Because it melts. It, it melts completely into the soup, and then it just kind of gets left behind a little bit. Yeah. So, yeah. But I'm remembering also whenever, like way back, whenever you added extra cheese, surely it's supposed to be creamier than that. 
Yeah. Like it's very creamy, very creamy. It's just also it's thin. It, yeah, it's liquidy because it's soup. Yeah. Okay, so this is good. Now I just have to cook my shells. Uh, I'm gonna have one cup of the soup with probably just three fourths a cup of the shells because um, I wanna be able to have ice cream for dessert. So I'm gonna limit my portion on the number of shells. And three fourths of a cup feels like it'll probably be a lot, but maybe once I measure it out, it won't be. I'll have to do some math and see what I really wanna do. Because one and a half cups feels like it would be a lot. I don't know, this recipe I love getting, oh, I'm gonna go back and get seconds. That's true. I All haven't right. made this since we um, have been watching our our portions. Yeah. And so normally I would have two bowls. Maybe I will have one and a half cups of shells because that still fits in my limit no, and I just I, won't get dessert. I was saying that though, that that was evidence of my bad health diet decisions. Like I, it's extra cheese, extra carbs. And, it is. And so just stick with the portions. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. I just. I'm not sure, sometimes I need a visual, and so I'm not sure how much three-fourths of a cup of shells will look in the bowl with the cup of soup. So when I make my bowl, I'll be able to better determine what I plan on doing. Yeah. Uh, but this is definitely one I could go back for more with, because it is so good. But you should not go back for more, because <laughs> portions. <laughs> um, as I said earlier, this is about 11 grams of carbs per cup. The shells are 42 grams, is that right? Yeah, 42 grams of carbs per three-fourths cups dry, which is a cup and a half cupped. Because um, shells tend to double. In they do? Yes. Wow. Most, most pasta doubles. Um, some don't quite double. So I sh should check that to be sure. But I, I'm 95% sure that, that this is one that doubles. Uh, egg noodles do not. Egg noodles don't change size when they cook. But most every other pasta doubles. Yeah, definitely your elbow macaroni does that. And uh, looking at these, okay, yeah, they did. Uh... Yeah, see, they're quite a bit bigger. Yeah, they have increased in size that so they absorb the boiling water. Yeah, and I know my timer says I have two and a half more minutes, but I am gonna go ahead and check one because you want to. they looked, oh well, no, they looked up. Okay. So it's white now or whiter instead of being yellow. It's definitely springy. I'm gonna say that this is done, but I'll take a bite to see. Yeah, it might have that. Top. <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely done. Wow. Now, I like mine al dente, which is springy but firm. And James tends to prefer his noodles to be a little bit softer. So, sorry, they're al dente. That's uh, fine. So with any pasta meal, because I need to control my portions, I will measure out my noodles and my soup separately, but then I will toss them all together for everybody else. I got some noodles stuck to the bottom. So this is three fourths of a cup, and there's some water in those noodles still. And yeah, that's not enough. So here's one and a half. That's good. I think that's good. It doesn't feel like too much to me. Okay, and a cup of soup. So yummy and good. I'm gonna reach across. Now I toss my noodles in for everybody else. Okay. 
And there is our taco soup. It is so yummy and good. When the kids realized what I was making for dinner today, they all got really excited. Except for my one picky eater who was like, taco soup, Ugh. He says that about everything. He really does. He's Like I said, he's a picky eater. My pot is still on high, so I'm officially turning it off. Here is my bowl of taco soup. You could totally, if you're not watching your saturated fats, you could totally take um, a pinch of some cheddar cheese and sprinkle it on top. I won't do that, but I will put it on the table in case the kids want to. Um, you could totally switch the sharp cheddar for like a triple cheddar or a white cheddar. That would be really good too. Um, I really like white cheddar. I might do that next time. What about like Mexican blend? You could do Mexican blend cheese, absolutely. Um, that has like, in there like that. Oh man. That ha that's the, like the the Colby Jack and the Monterey and the the cheddar and um yeah, all those like kind of sharp tastes. I wouldn't do like mozzarella or provolone or anything like that. Um not the Italian cheeses. That wouldn't make sense with this. So anyways, we're going to go have dinner. I hope you enjoy this recipe. If you try it, let me know in the comments. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And we will see you next time.